When setting up an Access database, there are several important items which we have to get right, especially while building the data tables. Organizing the data in the tables properly is vital because, among other things, it can affect the usage of the data once the database is live. To start with, of course, we create a table. I'm going to work in Design View, which sometimes makes setup easier. If I'm creating a business database, I might create a table for employee data, such as this one here. I'll right-click and bring it up in Design View. The critical things are, first, figuring out what fields go in. First and last name, address, city, state, zip code, and so on are all good. Second, what order they should be in. This can help make the info easier to use. But third, and the least understood, is the data type question. It simply means what kind of info goes in a field, and the confusion can arise when we put, say, a phone number in there. Why? Because a phone number is a set of numbers, so it should be a number data type, right? Well, actually, no. The key question here is, are you going to perform calculations with this? Is it a quantity or value? A birth date or a person's weight or the number of children they have, these are quantities. But a phone number or a social security number or an employee ID number, like this up here, will not be used for calculations. They're labels, like the SKU numbers on items and stores. So the data type should actually be text. We can click in the space, the drop-down, and change it accordingly. This has a couple of advantages. It can't be mistaken for a quantity type item by the database, and it saves space in the data table. Numbers can require more space if we don't set them as integer, for instance. I have to allow for the decimal places, you see. If I click the choice for home phone, go down to the general tab in the field properties, and click the space for the field size, we have the drop down here that lets us see integer, long integer, single precision, double precision. So at least a few different types of number are available to us. Actually selecting the data type, of course, is no trouble at all. Click the drop down, choose the one we want. And in this case, again, text, because the home phone is not a quantity, we're simply going to dial the digits. It is the equivalent of an ID number. If, on the other hand, we have a field we want to use for non-standard things, like the tax status here, we can use the lookup wizard to specify what should go into that field. Click the data type space, click the drop down, click on lookup wizard at the very bottom, up pops the dialog box. We click the button for, I will type in the values that I want, and click next at the bottom. Since a person normally can have only one of two kinds of status on this, one would be exempt and the other non-exempt, I simply go ahead and type them in here, then click Next at the bottom of that. We can choose to limit entries to the choices we put in, which in this case is pretty logical. We can also choose to allow or not allow multiple values. In this case, that would not be good. A person can't be both exempt and non-exempt at the same time, so we leave that off. Click on Finish. The drop-down defaults, in most cases, to text, but if we were to click the Lookup tab in the field Properties and glance down in the Row Source space here, we could see we have the choice of exempt or non-exempt just as we typed it in. We would then, of course, save what we were working on. I've been asked if we can fix a wrong choice on this sort of thing later. Theoretically, we can, but going from text to number can cause problems, since a number field can't contain letters, and even going the other way is not error-free, so some forethought here is a good thing.